let me show you how we can make this image pop by separating the subject from the background by just using a little bit of Lightroom. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So our raw file right here is at the moment not very pleasing to look at, but we want to change that by separating the subject from the background. This means I kind of want to keep the subject's brightness while I'm going to make the background a lot darker. And thus we are just creating a very strong contrast between subject and background. To start this, as always, we are going through the basic panel real quick. Right away we can work on the white balance. Since I want to give this whole image a very cold dark look, I'm going to drop the temperature a lot. We can also bring down the tint because at the moment there's a weird purple color cast going on and by reducing the tint we, go, we are going to introduce some stronger green tones to this image, which obviously fits quite well for this scene. Then let's work on the brightness. I want to start this by bringing down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit and as you can see this already helps quite tremendously by making the whole image darker and thus we are separating the subject already, since the subject is just a lot brighter than the rest of the image. We can tweak this a little further. I want to bring down the highlights. This will affect the subject, but by bringing down the highlights we are getting more details out of it. So this is looking pretty good. Then to further darken the background, all we need to do is to bring down the shadows. We can bring them down all the way and you can immediately see a huge improvement in contrast. Since as the name suggests, the shadows will only affect the darkest parts of the image and not our brightly lit subject. Looking at this program, you can see this results in a little bit of underexposure. I don't think it's too bad. Still, I don't want to risk having any black spaces in here so I'm going to bring up the blacks a lot just to counter that problem. And we can hold down the alt key while pushing the black slider to see where the underexposure is happening and it's right in this area which really don't need that much information. So that's okay. Now to bring back a little more contrast we can also play around with the whites slider and this will only affect the subject. This is a very nice way to push the contrast between background and foreground. This looks so much better already and we only have applied a bunch of very very basic adjustments. So let's continue. I want to bring up the texture which helps quite nicely to add detail to our subject. Usually I'm not going to raise it that much, but in this case I think it works quite well. At the same time I want to bring down the clarity a notch, just to smoothen out the image. And then let's add a bit of vibrance. At the same time I'm going to bring down the saturation. And the reason here is the vibrance will push the areas which already kind of have less saturation, while the saturation slider will push every color. So by doing this, we're reducing the overall saturation of the image by pushing the color intensity of the less saturated colors, if that makes sense. So this image looks already quite nice after the basic adjustments. Of course, we can tweak it a bit more by applying a little bit of masking. So let's do that. I want to start making the subject a little brighter and interesting. So what I want to do is to use the select subject mask as you can see, this works quite nicely, but I don't want to affect every part of the subject. Instead, I want to click on the three dots, choose intersect mask with, and here I'm choosing a radial gradient. I basically want to make the center of this plant a little brighter. So I just want to target this specific area. And what I want to do here is to slightly raise the exposure, bringing in some more highlights in here. Perfect. We could even push the highlights a bit, but that's about it. At this point, we can further separate the background from the foreground. So let me create a color range mask first. I'm going to click somewhere in the green part of the subject. As you can see, this is selecting quite a bit more than intended. First, however, I want to invert this color range mask. This is looking much better already. Now we can make use of the refine tool. 
to further get rid of the subject here. I do have a feeling we, de we do need to further adjust this mask. So let's say subtract, choose luminance range, and I'm clicking right here in the subject again. And this way we are getting a very good selection. We can adjust the luminance range some more to really only affect the background here. Okay, this looks like a proper mask. So what I wanna do with it is to bring down the exposure, making the background darker, just right about here. Again, we are ending up with underexposure and I don't want to have any pure blacks in here. So I'm going to raise the blacks to fix that. So that's looking much better. We can also work on the softness of the background. Therefore, all we need to do is to bring down the texture and the clarity. Wonderful. Now that's already it for the masking. So at this point, we already have a quite contrast rich image. Let's do a little bit of color grading. And for that, I want to start in the color mixer, just bringing down the green saturation a notch. And at the same time, I'm heading into the luminance tab to bring up the green luminance to further separate it from the background. Bringing up the luminance also will reduce the saturation in this color tone, so just be aware of that. Now I'm quite happy with the colors. Just one more thing. I do think I want to add some blue tint to the darker midtones and shadows. So in the split toning, let's go into the shadows, set up the hue to something cold right about here, and let's bring up the saturation. This works really well with this image. Let's see if we can work on the midtones as well. Maybe I'm going to even add a warmer color tone in here and bring up the saturation a bit. You see, this will push the subject's saturation some more in a quite pleasing way. That looks great. I wonder if we can also head into the calibration tab and play around here a bit, bringing down the blue primary hue. I think this looks good. So let's also push the saturation here. And that's pretty much it for the color grading of this scene. So after separating the subject from the background, doing a bit of color grading, we want to do a little bit of sharpening in the details tab. Let's do this real quick. I'm going to bring down the radius. I'm going to increase the details. I'm adding masking while holding down the Alt key so we can see that we nicely target the subject only. And I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's pretty much it for the Lightroom part of this video. All in all, the color grading and editing is done. Just one more thing I want to do, and that is some focus stacking, because I want this blend to be sharp from front to back. And that's why I have shot multiple images with different focal points just to achieve this effect. So we want to synchronize these settings with the other images. I'm holding down the shift key, click on the last image of the sequence, then hit the synchronize button, make sure to check all and hit synchronize. And once Lightroom has finished, all we need to do is right click on the images, go to edit in and choose open as layers in Photoshop. And by opening them as layers in Photoshop, this means we are getting all the images nicely organized in one Photoshop file. So sadly, Lightroom at the moment cannot do focus stacking. That's why we need to do this in Photoshop. First, we want to align the images. So I'm selecting all of them, go to edit, go to auto align layers and just hit OK. Let's hope this works. Okay, and with the images still selected, again, go to edit, choose auto blend layers to do the focus stacking without changing anything, hit OK. And with a bit of luck, we will end up with a crisp, sharp looking image. Perfect. So that's it for this Lightroom tutorial. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.